like to encourage you in this moment to all close your eyes. Put out your hands, lift your hands up. You can have them close by. But let's really focus in on Jesus. Let's give him everything that we have this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your freedom. Your heart is for me. Your ear is listening. You're safe in your love. Your army of angels watch over me. Your
you always will be. and of praise I was particularly struck by the lyrics of the song that we were singing just before where we we're singing that in every hour every minute you have always been there 
You are faithful and you always will be. In every triumph, every failure, you are loyal to me. You are faithful and you always will be. And the reason why I was so struck by that is because it says in God's word that the Lord will never leave us and never forsake us. So that means in every situation, in every triumph, every failure, every sickness, every well day, <laughs> every, every way that we can imagine, every way that we live out our lives, God is always there. And we can be encouraged by that because it means that no matter what we're going through, no matter what we're facing, that the Lord is with us. And he's with us in every step. He weeps with us and he laughs with us. That's really, really encouraging. And in that spirit, I want to share some things that people have been praying for. We have people in our church who are praying for all sorts of different things. And I'm going to share them with you now. And we're going to take a chance as a church together, as a family, to pray for these things together. We've also got people who are praising God for the good things that he has done, which is always so important to do. And I've got a list of things here. We've got, he's written his name on here, so I'm going to read it out. He said, John Bug is with us. He is thanking everyone for their support and prayers over the last eight months for his family. His brother's latest test results are good and he is cancer free. <laughs> Amazing. Wherever you are, John, if you're here in the room, that's incredible. Incredible, incredible. And you know, as, as a church family, we go through these journeys with each other. We're with each other in these things. And this is why we get so excited about hearing reports like this. Someone else as well is praying. They went for a job interview on Friday. I know who this person is. Went for a job interview on Friday and they got the job and it's their dream job. <laughs> We're so chuffed you, Sophia. <laughs> Name and shame you there. <laughs> this is amazing. But we also got people who are praying, who've got real, real needs and we're asking us to pray for them as a church together. So I'm going to read some of these now. We're praying for somebody who's looking for a church to call home. Someone is praying for to get a work permit in Canada. And we prayed about this before, but we're continuing to pray for someone who's 20 weeks pregnant and their baby is measuring small. They've got another hospital appointment on the 7th of May. And we continue to pray for that as well. And as always, we are continuing to pray for Ukraine and for the Middle East as well in the midst of war. And sometimes these things can seem like really huge things. But as we've sung about, as we've heard about, as we've prayed about, that God is with us in every single situation. That means no situation is too big and no situation is too small. So why don't you lift your hands up with me? Why don't you lift up your prayers? Anything that you are praying for yourselves is nothing is too big or too small for our God. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you are with us in every single moment of our lives, that you never leave us or forsake us. And Lord, we lift up the things that people have been praying for today. And Lord, we lift up everything that anyone in this room has got on their heart right now, Lord God. You hear us and you answer our prayers, Lord God. Be with us as we pray these things right now. Lord, we pray for your strength, Lord God. We pray for your healing, Lord God. We pray for your provision that you will give to us right now. And Lord, as we continue to worship, we will praise you always in your name. Amen. Come on, let's continue to sing. And I will praise on the mountain. I will praise in the valley. of God is so heavy here this morning. I'm sitting down the front here and I'm on the verge of tears. The presence of God is here. Some of you are saying to yourself, well, I don't feel it. Just do two things. We've already been given the instructions. Just close your eyes. Now just reach your hand up as if you're reaching out to the Lord Jesus right now. Begin to sense him. 
Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're here. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your power and for the strength that you give each and every one of us. Quicken us, Holy Spirit. Just reach out to him. Let him come upon you. Let his presence begin to permeate your heart. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, we thank you. You're here. Your power, your presence. Lord, may our cup overflow with your goodness, with your bounty, with your grace, with your glory. Lord, with your mercy, with your forgiveness, Lord. Would you just begin, make our cup overflow. Sing, my cup overflows. My cup overflows. Here in your presence, you pour in a blessing. You're more than enough. Yes, you are. We love you, Jesus. We are so appreciative of your love towards us and your mercy and your blessing upon us. Lord, we thank you. We thank you this morning for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Say something to somebody before you sit down. Welcome them. Don't wake the baby down the front here. So lovely to have you in church this morning. God bless you. My name is Tom Rawls. If you don't know me, uh, I'm the lead pastor of the church, not for too much longer. Hallelujah. Sam's in Togo, by the way. Tams, he's on the plane, actually, on his way to Togo. Um, Compassion have graciously paid all of his expenses. And, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I thought to myself, if they were doing one of those trips to, say, Paris or Italy or something like that, I'd be in for that, you know. Maybe we can do something that. But, no, hallelujah, anyway. Pray for Sam and pray for the Lord to really use him. We have two other guests with us this morning, Paul and Deb Hilton. They've been great friends of uh, Denise and I. Would you like to come up? I'm going gonna, gonna to let you just pass in front of me and you can sit down on the, the two-seater because you're married and you can sit next to each other. <laughs> so, just take a seat here. Paul and Deb, we've known each other for how long? Oh, nearly 30 years. Nearly 30 years. Have you fine. Hello. Hello. Is it on now? Oh, good. So, how long have we known each other? Uh, Well, we've been married. We've been married. No, not you. How long have you known me? This is about me. Sorry. How long have you known me? We've known we've known you about twenty-eight years. Twenty-eight years. Where did we first meet? Uh, We first met in Melbourne. Yeah, at a a missions conference thingy. Yeah, missions meeting. Yeah. And then you guys moved to Vietnam. And you worked with an organisation called AIG World Relief. AIG World Relief, mm-hmm. where you were doing during that time, there were some phenomenal things taking place, working with people in underprivileged situations, and you guys were leading the charge there. You then yep. took over the leadership of that whole thing. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Who did you take over from? That would be you, Tom. <gasps> so it was. <laughs> it's, it's not about Tom, though. Don't... <laughs> So it was. It's got to be about me somewhere. So you took over from me and you went and uh, just did some phenomenal things. But your role has changed probably the last, what, three, four years? Yeah, five I had, years? Um, probably four or five years organically, yeah. but, but officially in the last... Um, and what are you years. doing now? We're doing a lot of um, mentoring and coaching and providing pastoral care for other, other missionaries in different parts of the world. It was just something that the Lord spoke to us about and... And um, he actually said, don't waste what you've been given. So whatever the Lord gives you, never waste it. It's 
a purpose, pour it out, and that's what we're really doing now. And so you've been travelling the globe looking after other missionaries and mentoring and coaching them and being like a pastoral ear, praying for them, encouraging them. Sounds like a wonderful thing to be able to do. So the world is your parish. It's wonderful. It certainly is, yeah. And so we're really thrilled to have you here today. Deb, you've got, you're, you're a prolific author, and you've got three books there. I do. Go, give us a bit of a, a whirl. All right. Um, so this is the first one. Excuse my voice. I was supposed to preach today, but I've got hardly any voice, so excuse me. This one, it's in three parts. The first part is... Um, about my growing up years, I was in a dysfunctional family, but you know, it's all about you don't have to be defined by your past. Uh, the second part is our Bible school of life, where God took us through a stage where we lost everything and He became everything. And the third part is when He called us from our Australia to Vietnam, and I just said, I need something from you every day, and He did 200 days of miracles. So that's this one. This one, I used to have a black belt in control. I thought I had to fix everyone in everyone's world until God re um, really showed me that um, he's our burden carrier. Sorry. <clears throat> so Jesus, uh, the Holy Spirit actually spoke to me and said, um, whoever told you you're the burden carrier, that's actually Jesus' portfolio, not yours. And, um, and so it's just really my story and several other stories and then it's your story where you get with the Holy Spirit and hand things over that belong to him. And this one, if you want to know the call of God on your life, this will help you step by step. And it's very interactive and it's a 21-day devotional, but it can be much longer if you want to really take it serious. I've only got a small amount out there for sale, so first in best dressed. Fantastic. We're going we're gonna to finish here and we're going to let Paul do the preach. I think he pinched your sermon notes. I'm not too sure. No, he's, got his own. he's got his own message. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to go and sit down, me and you, Deb, down at the front, and we're going to listen to Paul preach, and the guys are going to come and lift us off and uh, take us out. Cool. Cool. Thank Great. you. Great. Thank you very much, guys. Give uh, Paul Hilton a, a mighty round of praise. Can you... Uh... I was looking for my, um, my iPad, but it's all, you guys are amazing. Thank you. Well, it's so good to be with you. How's that? Is that not too loud? Is it okay? We love, um, we love Tom and Denise dearly, and we love you guys as well. You, um, what an amazing church. And what an amazing, uh, amazing time of worship this morning. You know, that's, uh, the worship this morning has given me an incredible platform. Like the, the message that I want to share with you this morning, and I'm thinking every, every song, every, uh, every chorus, and I'm thinking that just lays down a foundation for what I want to share with you uh, this morning. But um, by way of intro, I just wanted to talk about um, a term all in. It's a gambling term. Now, it's an, I know it's a good way to start a message. We're talking about okay, gambling, but um, so it's a poker metaphor. It's like you know, but we've used that to describe as something or some somebody that may be fully involved, totally engaged, fully committed, without qualification. And so, when we're playing a game of poker, nobody plays poker here. When when people who play poker uh, play that game. Uh, when it's your turn, comes around to your turn, there are a number of, uh, a number of plays you can make, a number of uh, things you can do. You can actually fold or you can pass or you can raise the bid or you can go all in. Now, if you thought you had the winning hand, you would go all in. You would push your chips or your, all the money into the centre of the table and say, um, I've got the winning hand. So I've entitled my message uh, All In, but again, it's not about, about gambling. I want to pose a question. Are you all in on God's call on your life? And we all have a call on our lives, each one of us. Are you all in? Are you fully committed to what God's called you to? So I want to really challenge you with that today. I'm, every, every time I look at this message, and regularly, um, I challenge myself, am I actually all in for what God's called me to? You know, what he's called Deb and I to. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that... We do have a call on our lives. Lord, you have a call on our lives. Lord, you have a plan for our lives. 
Lord, your plan is always to do us good, Lord. And, and Father, we just pray this morning, Lord, just in this few moments as I share, share a few words uh, to, uh, and, uh, to, together this morning, Lord, that, that we would actually lean in, not only uh, in, in our minds but in our spirits, Lord. We would lean in to all that you want to say to us to, uh, this morning, Lord. And so we commit this time to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Now, the Bible is full of people who are all in. Did you know that Noah was all in? Could you imagine building a boat and telling people it's going to rain and people would say, what's rain? It hadn't rained before. Oh, there's going to be a flood. What's a flood? So you can imagine the mockery and, and, and the ridicule. Did anyone see Evan Almighty? <laughs> so it might give you a little bit of an indication, but it would have been a lot worse than that, uh, of what the, the ridicule may have been. Uh, Abraham was all in. He left family. The Lord said, go to a place that I'll show you. He didn't even give him instructions. He didn't have Google Maps. It was, go there, head off, and I'll show you where you're going. Uh, He was really all in when the Lord spoke to him and said, look, I want you to sacrifice your only son, Isaac. And uh, so he's thinking, that's my whole future. It's it's going to be through my son. He was all in. Um, Moses was all in when the Lord spoke to him and said, go back to, to Egypt. Now, he left there a murderer. And the Lord said, go back to Egypt. And so he was all in. Queen Esther, when she approached the king, was all in. It could have been her life, but she was all in. Daniel ended up going into a lion's den. Now, he was all in there, in the, in the lion's den, but he refused to pray to the king because he was all in. Jesus was all in for you and I. He was completely all in. I just want to share a little bit about my story, our story. This goes back to before we met um, Pastor Tom and and, and Denise. We, um, this goes back to year 1991. And so that's a few years ago. And uh, we, uh, our hometown is Newcastle, not, not your Newcastle. You probably named yours after ours, but (laughs) <laughs> ours is um, a bit further south than here so that was our hometown but, and uh, yeah, we were serving the Lord Look, we were involved in church and uh, uh, Deb was involved in music ministry we had a connect group which we grew to about 40 people had to split it and, and so I was involved in men's ministry I was on the board of the church so it wasn't like we weren't doing anything but there was this growing dissatisfaction that there's got to be more and uh, so the Lord started speaking to us about um, doing more, obviously. But, and have you ever prayed about something? It's like the heavens are like brass. You're saying, God, what are you, what are you doing? There's something going on. And then the Lord started speaking to other people and said, look, I've got a word for you. you know, there's change coming and, uh, and um, we're really, really excited. That made it even worse because now the Lord's speaking to somebody else and still not speaking to me. Have you ever, ever been through that? And so we ended up in, the upshot of the whole thing, we ended up moving to Tasmania. And we call that our Bible school of life. Because in six years in Tasmania, we went, th- went there in our preparation to go to Vietnam. So I- I'd been in business, and because it was a church plant, we went down to support a couple that had planted a church there. As a church plant, there's no salary for us, so I thought, well, I'll, I'll buy a business to support ourselves. Bought a business, um, and-, and I'd a- a- always done pretty well when we were in Newcastle. We'd built our dream home on a couple of acres of land, had a couple of cars, swimming pool, and- entertained a lot so that was that was kind of our life but we were still serving the Lord um, in in the middle of all that but we were dissatisfied so we, we moved, moved to Tasmania bought this business which ended up being a lemon we understand that term a lemon is a <laughs> it was just bad it went, it went went south went went pear shape and we lost everything financially we lost everything but have you ever got angry at God you know, you think, God, what's going on? We've left everything. We've sown everything in to, to serve you. Left family. It was kind of like Abraham's experience. Where the Lord said, you know, leave family, everything that you know. And we left. And we had people saying, you guys are crazy. You've got it made here. You know, you can serve God here. You don't have to move somewhere else. And, and our family, were probably the, it was probably the hardest family, family saying, look, you shouldn't go. And so all of those challenges. But we just knew God was calling us. Anyway, so we, we lost everything. So uh, after, you know, arguing with God and, and Deb had to go and get part-time work because I couldn't, I couldn't 
generate any income. You know, for me personally, my whole manhood was called into question. I'd always been a good provider for my family. Now I couldn't do that anymore. And uh, so I'm saying to God, look, you know, I was in sales and I'm trying to make sales and it wasn't working. And he's saying, it's not going to work. You've got to come to the point where, where I'm your total source for, for everything. And uh, so uh, it was a humbling experience for me, but he had to deal with my pride. I, I kind of knew how, how good I was. And God said, well, let's see how good you are. And we, <laughs> and we went backwards and forwards, but we ended up, said, okay, God, we don't understand what's happening. The thing we do understand is that you are good and you want to do us good. So whatever you're doing, let's get on with it. Let's, let's, let's not go around the mountain, let's get on with it. Now, we got on our hands and knees and just, just sought the Lord and, and, and that's what we said to him, let's get on with it. And uh, we just said, we're all in. Whatever you're doing, we're all in. We're not going to be half, do it half measures. Now, did our situation change immediately? No, it didn't, but we did. There was a shift in our spirits and we said, God, we're, we're going to be all into whatever you have called us to. So Jesus calls all of us to be all in. He calls us to lay our lives down for the call that's gone on in our, our lives, deny ourselves and follow him. In Matthew 16, verses 24 to 25, it says this, Then Jesus said to his followers, If people want to follow me, they must give up the things that they want. They must be willing to even give up their lives to follow me. Those who want to save their lives will give up true life. And those who give up their lives for me will have true life. But there's an incredible promise, and this is a promise that he makes to us uh, when we give our lives fully to him. And as I said before, I mean, the, the, the platform from the, from the worship this morning has been incredible for this word that I, that, that I wanted to share. It says in uh, John chapter 10, 10, from the Passion Translation, I've come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, life in its fullness, until you overflow. We can't contain all that God's got for us. You know, we can dream. How, how well can you dream about the things of God, about what you would like in your life, uh, what you like in your family, what you, you would like in your business or your job? Or um, We can dream, dream big, but he'll give us more than we expect, far more than we expect. What an incredible promise. But it's a, a promise for those that are all in. If we're in halfway... Maybe we're not going to get that promise. So why do we struggle to be all in? Can I have a show of hands? Do, we, do you struggle from time to time? It's not just me. I, you don't get up in the morning and, you know, some people think, think our missionaries are kind of like God, you know. We get up in the morning and we hover above the ground, you know. We kind of hover everywhere and it's like, no, we have the same sort of struggles that everybody else. We just live, live at a different address. And um, so why do we struggle to be all in? Maybe we think we're going to miss out on some of the good things in life. Um, there's a sacrifice to be made. Maybe I'm not prepared to make that sacrifice. Um, I've got to give something up. That's, that's an, another one. There's peer pressure. Maybe I'm not as good as um, the other person. Like, we, we observe other people and we can see other people and see their ministry and think, I couldn't do that. I'm not up for the task. We do comparisons. Who's on social media? It's not a trick question. You, you, you're allowed to... Can I, can I get open some water? No. Thank you. So you're on social media. Have you ever... Um, and we follow social... And there's nothing wrong with, with social media. I mean, and it can be great. It can be harmful. <laughs> but... You know, I, I, could, um, I could post a, something like a photo on, on social media. Deb could post one. She'll get 500 likes and I'll get two. And it's like, why? You know, and we do comparisons. We compare our life to someone else's highlight reel. Don't answer, but you put a photo up on social media. Have you used a filter? Or is it that raw photo, that first photo we put up? Or do we put it through a filter? We, when we, we do that, we, we take six photos... And we pick the best of them, we put that up. But we, we can compare our lives to someone else's highlight reel. This is all wonderful. And I look at my life against theirs and I think, man, mine's, mine's up the creek. My life is nothing like that. So we can do that comparison. 
So why do we struggle to be all, all in? Ultimately, it comes down to fear over faith. It's fear over faith. Can I really trust you with my whole life? Can you be trusted, God? Are, are you enough? You know, Deb wrote that book, uh, Out of Control, and, you know, it's, it's, it came out of a whole series of events that happened in our lives. We, we, we had a, a lot of deaths in our family. We had a, you know, our daughter's marriage fell apart, and there was a whole bunch of stuff, and it all happened, bang, 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 you know, it's kind of, God, what's going on? And Deb would always like to try and... She doesn't mind me saying this because she shares this, but she'll try and make everybody else's world all okay if it wasn't okay. And, but she'd have to deal with it lest everyone's world fall apart. And there was a series of events that, that she couldn't deal with. And, and she had to say, God, I can't deal with this. I'm going to have to trust you. So, it, But it was a journey. So, But she asked that question, God, are you enough? Are you enough in my finances? Are you enough in my family? I can trust you with my, with my health, but can I really trust you with my family or with my finances? And so it became, can be a real fear. So can I, <clears throat> can I risk releasing control of my life to you? We all like to have some control. doesn't matter who we are. It's kind of like if, you know, if I, I, I live my life this way and I, I, I'm in control, it's all going to work out. But can we risk releasing control of our life to God? God can do more with your relinquished control than you can by holding on to it. We can try and hold on to it, but God can do far more than what you and I can do. In Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7, again from the, the Passion Translation, it says this, Don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faithful requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. What an incredible promise. Uh, Proverbs 29 and 25, Fear and intimidation is a trap that holds you back. But when you place your confidence or your faith in the Lord, you'll be seated in the high place. When I read that, I always think of a lion and a hyena. <laughs> a lion's always in the high place. A hyena's down here groveling in fear. But I want to be in a place of faith. So let's choose faith over fear. Fear says I can't, can't do what God's asking me to do. What's God asking you to do right now? Right now, 2024, in in this season of your life, what's, what's God asking you to do? Fear will say, I can't do what he's asking me to do. I don't have the ability, um, I don't have the money, I don't have this, I don't have that, whatever. What is he asking you to do? Fear says, oh, I can't do what God's asking me to do. Faith says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'll trust in the Lord with my whole heart and depend not on my own understanding or my lack of understanding. Sometimes there's a lack of understanding. Maybe God calls us to something and we think, well, no, I, I can't do that. Well, maybe you get a bit of clarity on it. Maybe get some counsel. Maybe seek the word. Maybe say, Holy Spirit, can you reveal to me how I'm going to do this? He'll do, he'll, he will. I mean, God calls us to do all sorts of things. I mean, we travel a bit now. We don't have a large bank account to travel. We just trust God. But he makes a way because he's called us to do something. If he calls you to something, he'll make a way. And he says, I'm, gonna let, uh, 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 I'm saying, I'm going to let him uh, lead me and he'll show me what to do and how to do it. You know, I, I, don't, you know, um, I don't have answers for everything the Lord calls us to. I have very little of those. <laughs> but but um, he equips me. He brings people into my life that'll help me do what he calls me to do. What we've done in, um, in Vietnam with um, a whole range of community development stuff, you know, we went from uh, supporting 50 kids to get an education route through to 1,600 kids, then we're working in a whole range of villages and um, en ended up, we've, we've seen over two and a half million dollars come through in the time that we've been there from a very, uh, for projects, just transformation in communities, a whole bunch of stuff. But we couldn't do that. God did that. And I, I'd often say, look, I'm not smart enough to do what we've, <laughs> we've been doing in Vietnam, but I've got a lot of smart people that I work with and, and that I connect with and are in our network. And, and so what's God calling you to do? Let's exercise faith, not fear. 
Fear says, I'm weak. Don't have to show you, and I'm not looking for a show of hands, but have you ever felt weak? God calls you to something and it's like, oh, I just don't have the strength for that. I don't have the strength physically. I don't have the strength mentally. I don't have the strength emotionally. I'm weak. That's what fear says. Faith says this. Jesus' grace is sufficient for me. His power is made perfect in my weakness. No matter how weak I might feel, his power is made great in my weakness. I, <clears throat> I, I just love that. Fear says I'm insignificant. Ever felt insignificant? <clears throat> Faith says I've been chosen of God. I'm holy and beloved. I'm God's workmanship created to produce good works. <clears throat> you know what the will of God for your life is? Is to go and produce good works. Ever wonder well, what's God's will for my life? Just, just go and love on people. Just, just, just get in people's world, you know. We, we can often talk about, you know, we need to get, get people to accept Jesus and we'll, you know, we, we, we start discipling them. Discipleship starts the day you meet somebody. You just start doing life together. Have a coffee. You know, we live in a crazy, mixed-up world and um, people need to know that someone cares. Just, we just need to get into people's world and, 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 and just be Jesus to them. He's everything we need. I'm, insig- I'm insignificant. That's what fear says. Faith says, I've been chosen of God. I'm holy and beloved. I'm God's workmanship. You are God's workmanship. So let's choose faith over fear. In uh, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, it says this. And I love this. It's from the Amplified. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but has given us a spirit of power, of love, of sound judgment and personal discipline. Abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and also self-control. Who wants a calm, well-balanced mind? Is that, is that yours every day? Every waking moment you get, oh, I'm nice and calm, it's all wonderful and something comes out of left field, I'm, I'm calm. That's what I want. That's what he promises us. God will be with us in every situation. He'll never leave us, never forsake us. And we sang about it. We sang about that this morning. Do we believe that? Do we believe what we're, what we're declaring? Uh, Deuteronomy 31 and 8 says, The Lord himself will go before you. He'll be with you. He'll not leave you or forget you. Don't be afraid and don't worry. Psalm 9 and 10 says, For everyone who, puts, who knows your wonderful name keeps putting their trust in you. They can count on you to, for help no matter what, O Lord. You'll never, no, never neglect those who come to you. We can go all in because he's everything we need. Our God is everything we need. 2, two uh, Peter 1 and 3 says, Everything we could ever uh, need for life and godliness has already been deposited in us by his divine power. But all this was lavished upon us through the rich experience of knowing him who has called us by name, called you by name, invited you to come to him through a glorious manifestation of his goodness. We can go all in because God will be everything we need him to be. He'll be everything you need him to be. In, uh, in Exodus chapter uh, 3, we re- read the narrative of, of Moses, you know, and the Lord speaks to Moses and said, look, I want you to go back to Israel and lead my people out of Israel. I've seen, I've seen their suffering. I've seen their, uh, they're in bondage and I, I want you to lead them uh, out again. And, of course, we know some of the narrative and, and um, Moses, you know, a bit further on complains, says, you know, I can't speak. Who are me? Send somebody else. That's what he's really saying. Um, but in this narrative, in this, in this conversation, when the Lord speaks to Moses, he says, well, who do I say sent me? And he said, well, tell the people of Israel that the God of their ancestors has sent, has sent you. God said, I am who I am. Say this to the people. I am has sent, uh, sent you to them. And <clears throat> if we get this, the I am, this is an incredible, this will be an incredible breakthrough for you on how you just deal with just life. Because our I am is everything. See, the Hebrew word used here uh, is a word, a Hebrew word, heya, which means let there be. So it's the same word used in Genesis where the Lord said, let there be light, and there was light. So it's a creative word. God is a creative God. 
But um, the secret to the creative process in creation is this. Creation doesn't come from the creator. Creation is the creator. In uh, 1 John, and I don't think this scripture will come up, but uh, 1 John 1, it says, In the beginning the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. So he, he is the creator. So that same word, so back to Moses, that same word in, uh, in where he's talking to, to um, Moses, he's using it in, in the first person this time, and he says, uh, er, ia, Asher, er, I am who I am, I am what I am, I will be what I will be, I will be whatever you need me to be. And in this case, Moses needed him to be deliverer. What do you need God to be for you? Deliverer? Healer? Maybe a restorer of broken relationship? What do you need your God to be? What do you need Jesus to be to you? Because he will be all you need to be, need him to be. So as you step into what God is calling you to, and what is God calling you to? He'll be calling you to something. You are already called. What's he calling you to? Maybe it's a new season. Maybe it's a business. Maybe it's a relationship, what, that might, uh, what might that be? As you step into that, fear not. Because he will be all you need him to be. What do you need him to be? Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10 says, Do not yield to fear, for I'm, I'm always near. Never turn your gaze from me, for I am your faithful God. I'll infuse you with my strength and help you in every situation. I'll hold you firmly with my victorious right hand. In a poker game, the player would go all in if they knew that they had the winning hand. But it'll still be a gamble. There's still no guarantee. With God, it's guaranteed. We're guaranteed to win. He holds the winning hand and he holds you in that hand. So we can go all in. We can exercise our faith over fear when he calls, calls us to, to, to be all in. So I just want to close with this. <clears throat> the word overflow. Last year, the, the, every year we, we ask the Lord for a, a word. This year it's, it, it's fruitfulness. But I just want to share a little bit about last year was overflow. And um, the Lord just promised us an overflow. And there's been an overflow in our lives. Um, scripture that he gave us was in Psalm 65 11 says you crown the year with your bounty and your paths overflow and I want to repeat that scripture we um, shared before from John 10 10 I've come to give you everything in abundance more than you expect life in its fullness until you overflow it's an overflow um I, I think of about about it like a, a block tap and a, and a block sink uh, sorry a tap that won't stop running and a block sink what will happen? You'll get an overflow. And then what do you actually do? You, you've got to run around and get vessels or containers to catch the overflow because the sink's not going to contain them. And that's the way I see it with our lives, with that, that promise. See, whatever you can dream about, whatever you can imagine, Jesus has promised you far more than that. And there's an overflow. But the key here is that we can't contain the overflow. And the overflow is not for you. But we're like a conduit. You know, if the Lord can get stuff through us, he'll get it to us. And so we become the overflow to others, others in our lives. And so when Jesus came to rescue us, we were the others. We were the others. You know, our plan was put in, put in place to redeem mankind and redeem you and I. And he came and we experienced his overflow. God's intention is to bless you and for you to be a blessing. But there's an overflow. You are a blessing to, to so many others. So can I pray for you? Is that okay? Father, we just thank you, Lord, for <clears throat> your incredible love for us, Lord. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you were all in. You went all in. You didn't uh, shrink back. Lord, you knew you knew the sacrifice that needed to be made for us, for our redemption, that we might live a, an abundant life. We might live the life that you've destined us to live, Lord. And Lord, you went all in.
Father, we thank you, Lord, for your incredible love. We thank you, Lord, for your, your individual call on our lives. And Lord, this morning, Lord, we, we've sung about your goodness. We've sung about your favour. We've sung about, Lord, that you would go wherever we are. Lord, we, you'd never leave us nor forsake us, Lord. We, we've sung about that, Lord, and we, Lord, we, we've um, shared some scriptures together, Lord, that remind us of who you are. That, Lord, that you are our everything. Lord, that you are uh, our I am. That you would be all we need you to be, no matter what we're going through in our lives. So, Father, this morning, Lord, we, we come to you. Lord, we recognise that, that um, we have a need of you. We recognise, Lord, that we need uh, you, Lord, in our lives. We recognise, Lord, that we're lost without you. So, Lord, we come to you. And we say... Uh, Holy Spirit, do uh, all that you need to do in and, in and through us uh, today, Lord. We commit our way to you, Lord. We thank you. And we just pray, Holy Spirit, move upon our hearts. Call us, uh, uh, call us into all that you've uh, designed and, and, de- and designated for us, Lord. Uh, and we just pray, Lord, that, that, that fear, Lord, would not, would not rear its ugly head, Lord, but faith, Father, would prevail. Lord, we, we stand in faith, Lord, believing you at your word. Lord, we're not going to fear any longer, Lord. We're going to step in, in, into all that you've called us to, Lord, and we do that in faith. And we commit our, ourselves and our, our, our futures, our plans, everything, Lord, we commit to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. good we just want to have a, just a few moments just really just to open the altar if, if you really feel that the Lord's um, spoken to you and just really you want to do business with God and we all need to we all you know he doesn't want us shrinking back you know we've been singing you know we've been uh, the whole focus this morning really has been on uh, the goodness of God his favour upon our lives his call on our lives and that we can trust him See, the, the subtext of Deb's book, Just Say Yes, is you can trust him in your journey. And uh, you can trust him with your life. So let's, let's get real with God this morning. Not that you're not real with, <laughs> with God, but let's get real with God. 
let's um, so if you, you would like prayer, we're going to pray. So let's say, if you want to just spend some time with the Lord, you might want to do that, that just privately. That's fine, but we're going to pray. So if you want to come, come to the altar, we're ready to pray. Is that good? Okay, thank you, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you do call us. Lord, you do have a call on our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you want to do us good. You want to do us good, Lord. Lord, and uh, you have a plan, you have a purpose for our lives, Father. So we thank you, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, meet us at our point of need. Wherever we're at, Lord, we trust you. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Father. We're family here. <laughs> so let's not be uncomfortable with each other. If you have a need, if you have a health issue and you want us to pray, we prayed earlier in the service. A health issue. If you have a health issue, we want to pray. If you have a relationship issue, and I'm not saying you come, come, and divulge all the details of your relationship, but if you just want prayer for a, a broken relationship, let's pray. Let's pray. If you've got a a business decision, it might be for business, or it might be regarding a job, which we could be heard earlier on. You got the job? <laughs> uh, if you need a job, let's pray. You know, God's promised that he would give, give us a life of abundance more than we expect. So what's your expectation? Do you have an expectation of better health? Do you have an ex- expectation of a better relationship? Do you have an expectation of a better job or a job? So let's respond this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Mm. Okay, let's pray. <clears throat> so if you've got a need, whether it be a, a health need, whether it be a financial need, uh, whether it be a relationship need, you know, <clears throat> relationships can be uh, sensitive. You know, relationships are important. We, we are built for relationships. I just have a sense that there's some, maybe some relationship issues. And again, we don't want to know all the personal details about your, the relationships, but God knows. And we want to pray. So whatever those issues are, whatever those needs are, Let's pray into those and, and, and let's believe God that there's going to be a, uh, going to be an exchange. There's going to be an exchange from where things are at now to where you would love them to be, but where he intends them to be. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for, Lord, as we, <coughs> we, we come together this morning, we, we, we've, we've praised you lord we've declared lord that you are a, a god over all areas of our lives lord we've declared what a good good father you are and this morning lord we we speak that over our lives father lord and i speak that over every life here this morning lord that um that lord whether it be a relationship issue lord that you will be holy spirit starting to bring uh, restoration to the, that relationship lord that if there are conversations that need to be had that that that, that faith would rise over fear and commitments would be made to re- restore relationship, to, to meet together, to do whatever's necessary. And Holy Spirit, that you would be the one that guides that. Lord, for health issues, those that are suffering a, a health issue, Lord, you're our, our deliverer, you're our uh, Jehovah Rapha, you're our healer. And Father, we declare health in Jesus' name. Health in Jesus' name, no matter what that health issue is, we declare health, Father, in Jesus' name. And even now, Lord, um, 
that, that, that the people would, would sense a, a, a touch upon their body. They would sense something happening. That, Lord, you're at work. You're at work. When we cry out to you, Lord, you're not an absent God. You're not a God who turns his back on us, Lord, but you respond. And so, Father, we thank you. So we pray for health. Father, we pray for those in need of a job. We just declare jobs and job opportunities that would, would come like never before. The ideal job, whether it's a, a transition, we just pray, Father, for those that are in transition for a new job, for the ideal job, the ideal position. Father, those that are, have financial issues, Father, we pray for breakthrough. We pray, Father, that the windows of heaven, Father, would be over their situation. We pray, Father, for uh, financial uh, deliverance, financial release in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. For, for those, um, those in business, maybe struggling in business, think, thinking, uh, uh, where, where's, where's the next dollar coming from? Father, we, we declare uh, prosperity in Jesus' name. We speak prosperity over every business and we declare that, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You're a good, good Father. You're a good, good Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, this the Holy Spirit, so you can feel His presence right now. And I'm aware that perhaps some of you might be here and you've been hearing, hearing Paul talk about this life that we are called to live, this, this peace that we have that we can't quite understand, this strength that we feel and that the Holy Spirit gives us, that God is always with us and we've been singing about him this morning, you've been hearing him preached about and perhaps that's not something that you understand or not something that you've experienced before, perhaps you've come in here today and you're not somebody who calls yourself a Christian, um, it's not something that you've done yet and something that we do in every single service and it's the reason why we're here is because we want to give you an opportunity to respond to what Paul has been saying to respond to what we've been seeing about and to invite Jesus to be in your life to be your Lord and Savior so right now if I could ask everyone to close their eyes and bow their heads and the reason why we do this is to allow ourselves a moment of focus to not be distracted by anything else that's happening around us by anyone else that right now, this moment, you can focus on you and on God, no matter where you're at. And right now, I'd like to ask you that if you are here, if that's you and you're here saying, I'm, I don't have a relationship with Jesus yet, I've not given my life to Jesus, but it's something that I want to do. Maybe you feel a stirring in your spirit. Maybe you feel something that you can't quite understand. That might be the Lord prompting you to respond. So if, it, if that is you today, then what we're all going to do together is we're going to pray a prayer which will allow Jesus to come into your life, to invite him in. And we're all going to pray that together so that you're not doing that on your own. But just so that I know who I am praying that with today, I'd like you just to raise your hand to let me know if that's you. If you would like to invite Jesus into your life, maybe for the first time, or maybe you've walked away from God and you're coming back to him after a while. So if that is you today, if you could just raise your hand, I'll see it and I'll acknowledge it. I'm not going to draw attention to you or make a spectacle of you. Nobody else is looking. Everyone else here has got their eyes shut. And just gently raise your hand and I'll acknowledge it. And then I'll know who it is that I'm praying with this morning. Thank you. And as I mentioned, perhaps that you, this isn't the first time you've been in this situation. Maybe you once had a relationship with Jesus. Maybe you once were a Christian. But over time, you've walked away, maybe you've become disillusioned, maybe life has just happened and got in the way, well it's never ever too late to come back there's always that opportunity, God welcomes us back with open arms, as we said before he is, will never leave us, never forsake us, he is always with you so if that's you you can raise your hand as well and we will pray that prayer with you thank you What we're going to do right now in this moment is we're going to pray a prayer but we're all going to pray it together so that if that is you today if you're praying that prayer to invite Jesus into your life then you're not on your own we're all together with you and I'm going to read a line I'd like you to repeat the line after me so we can all pray this prayer together so we'll pray dear Lord Jesus I open up my life to you thank you for your forgiveness 
Thank you for your love. Thank you for calling me into a life of purpose. I believe in you, Lord Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I am now a Christian. And from this day onwards, I will follow you. Amen. Woo! Amazing. You know, and the reason we clap and cheer in that moment is because we believe that making that decision is the best decision that you will ever make in your life. To invite Jesus into your life, to know that life, that Holy Spirit will give you is the best decision you can ever make. And that is the first step. And perhaps you've got questions. Perhaps this is all very new to you, and that's absolutely fine. <laughs> there are plenty of people here who are here to answer your questions. And if that was you today, if you did make that decision and raise your hand, then someone will have seen you more very discreetly in the atrium after the service. Uh, be there to hand you a Bible, be there to speak to you about the decision that you've made and answer any of those questions you have. And perhaps if you didn't think that you weren't quite ready to raise your hand in that moment, but you prayed that prayer, then if you go and speak to somebody in the atrium as well after the service, if you have questions, they'll be ready to answer those for you as well. But we are so, so excited for that decision that you've made today. It's the reason why we're here, as I said before, and we are so, so thrilled for you. And it is our honor to be with you on that journey as well. Um, can we give Pastor Paul a, a hand? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your sort of brilliant message. And it's so good to have you both here with us. It's a real privilege for us. And thank you. And we're actually going to be taking um, an offering together very shortly. We're going to be having a time to give our regular tithes and offerings, but we're also going to be taking up an offering together, which we like to call a partnership offering. Um, and what that is, is it's us partnering with what, you are, what you're doing and your ministry and our way uh, of showing how grateful we are for what you brought for us this morning. Uh, but it's our way of showing that we're partnering with them. So we're going to take an opportunity to do that very shortly. But first, um, I'm just here to let you know that things are still happening. <laughs> Next Sunday, we've got Pastor Sam. I'm going to call him Pastor Sam. We're calling him Pastor Sam already, aren't we? Um, he is going to be preaching next Sunday um, with us. Oh, and I'd like to take your seats. Tom was going like this to me. I thought he was telling me to be quiet. So I was like, oh, no, I'm being a bit too loud. Oh, you're telling me to sit down. Now I've acknowledged it. Okay, hello. You can tell him to take your seats. Thank you. Okay, let's start again, shall we? Next Sunday, Pastor Sam is going to be preaching. <laughs> As, uh, as Tom mentioned, he's currently in Togo with Compassion at the moment, so we're very, I'm very excited to hear about everything that he's going to be doing over there, and I'm sure he will tell us when he is back with us next Sunday. He is going to be preaching. We are here every single Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Um, every single week, so please, if you've got people in your world who you feel like we need to hear these messages, you need to be in this atmosphere of worship, who can be part of our church family, then please do invite them along. Um, it's a great privilege to have them here with us as well. Um, and again, you can connect with us online as well. The link's just behind me to find out a little bit more about what's going on in the week. Um, but first, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to be taking up our, our offerings today and our regular giving. Um, and to inspire us around that, I would like to invite John Lee up to join me on stage. A wonderful John Lee. Have you ever been abroad and you listen to the radio? You hear a song come on, you remember the tune, but the words are in a completely different language. And you sing along pretending you know what is being said, right? Okay, there's a few other people in the room who's been there. And one of the things I most love about our, our shared faith in Jesus is that wherever you go in the world, there are people worshiping God, doing kingdom work. And you know, some of my favorite moments of worship have been where I've been in a, in a different country and I hear a worship song that I know really well and it's been sung by people in their native language. And you have one of those goosebump moments where you realize that God is so much bigger than you realize. And today, we've got this opportunity in the UK, here in Norwich, we are able to worship without fear of persecution or violence. We live in complete freedom. We live in wealth, living here in the UK as well. And we've got this ability to worship God freely. But that's not always the case for the context where Paul and Debs Hilton serve. You know, they serve as the AAG World Relief Directors in Vietnam. And actually, for, for many years in Vietnam, it was illegal to be a Christian. People there weren't free to worship like we are. And actually, thousands of people left Vietnam over the decades because it just wasn't safe to be a Christian there. And we've got an opportunity to partner with them today to support their work, supporting Christians in Vietnam and pastors all over Asia. 
And we've got that opportunity to partner with them today financially. And as I was preparing for this moment, uh, reading up on their great work and all they do around the world, I was trying to imagine if I was a Christian in the context where they serve, how would I be feeling? And I've got a, a slight insight. I spent some time out in Cambodia and Laos many years ago. And whenever I met a church pastor who was being supported by people like Paul and Debs Hilton, they were always so overwhelmed with gratitude and joy that people were remembering them, that people were coming alongside them and supporting them. And it reminded me of this verse in Philippians 1, and Paul's writing to the church here, and he says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you are making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from this day until now. And Paul here is celebrating joy with joy because people are partnering with him in the gospel. And at the time, Paul was in prison for, for persecution himself, and he's filled with joy because people are financially supporting him. They're not just sending thoughts and prayers or hands together emojis. They're giving despite their own challenging financial circumstances because they believe in the power of the gospel and they're partnering with him. And in a minute, uh, Lily will come back up and she'll share with you the practical ways we can do that. But today is our opportunity to support Christians in Vietnam and all the places that Paul and Deb serve financially, despite maybe our own challenging financial circumstances, because we can give joy to people. And as I leave you, I want you to, to imagine what Paul would have felt like. He's in prison. He's done nothing wrong. He's there because he believes in Jesus. And he's got joy because people have come alongside him. They've partnered with him in the gospel. And today, church, we can do that same thing for other people around the globe. Thank you. Thanks so much, John. So if you'd like to respond to what John was just saying, there's then there's a few ways that you can do that. Uh, the first way is by going to proclaimers.com slash giving uh, to give through our website. There's some instructions on there and there should be a specific place to take the partnership offering uh, to give directly to, to a partnership offering there. If you have the Church Suite app, you can also give through that. Or the other way is you can uh, put cash in the containers that will be shortly coming down the rows as well. Uh, so there are different ways that you can get on board with giving this morning. Got a couple of things to let you know about as well. This week we have our groups that are back on. Yes, groups are wonderful. They're how we keep a large church well connected. Uh, they're small groups. We meet together in small groups, usually at people's houses. Some of them meet online. Um, we usually have food together, have a chance to talk about the message uh, from this week or talk about things that we've been reading about in the Bible. It's a really lovely way for, to get to know each other in a smaller, more intimate setting. Simon and I run a group on a Tuesday. If you want to come along to ask, come and speak to us later. Or, or if there's somebody that you like and you want to join their group, just ask them what group they're in and you can go along as well. So good to have our groups back on this week. Um, and another thing to let you know about as well is that on Sunday, the 12th of May, so in a few weeks' time, uh, we are going to be having our Heart for Our House Sunday. And what that means is we are going to be launching our projects this year's Heart for Our House. So we're going to be letting us know what are the projects that we're going to be um, using our Heart for Our House giving towards this year. We'll be we giving the offering later on in the year, so you don't need to have your money ready by the 12th of May. Don't panic. Um, we will be taking that up later um, in the year. But on the 12th of May, for Heart for Our House Sunday, it's our opportunity to find out about those projects, to launch those projects and let us know what that money is going to be going towards, which is really, really, really exciting. So why don't you stand to your feet? We're going to take an opportunity to worship together uh, before we finish our service. You ready to go out of the bank this morning?